So Dr. Schultz, today we're talking about PSMA. This has been a really popular scan on our channel, actually, and we have multiple questions about it. But first of all, can you give a context for what a PSMA scan is? I've characterized it as the biggest discovery since PSA. And why is that? Well, it's a, um, a scan that uh, only lights up for prostate cancer. I mean, there are rare exceptions to that. And it uh, is quite sensitive. In other words, it can pick up much smaller amounts of cancer than anything we've had uh, previously, uh, both inside the prostate and in the rest of the body. So for the first time, we have a much more authoritative look at whether the cancer is spread. People could say we've had bone scans and CAT scans for a long time, but the uh, amount of cancer that was needed to be seen on those scans was like maybe a half inch or a chunk of cancer. That's like a billion cancer cells. The early detection of metastasis with older scans, like CAT scans and bone scans, was not really early. Uh, now with the PSMA PET scans, we can pick up things much, much smaller, and the uh, possibility then of treating metastatic sites uh, and even curing people with early metastasis is on the table now. So we have a lot of people who are new to the prostate space and there's a lot of terms that they're having uh, to learn and one of them, we, we oftentimes talk about PET CT or maybe they hear PET CT from their doctor but now they're hearing PSMA PET and so what is the difference between those two? Well there are other types of PET scans and this is why the PSMA PET technology has been a adopted so quickly throughout the country, as we've had PET scans for breast cancer and lung cancer and lymphomas for many years, and uh, they were very useful. A couple years ago, they came up with a serviceable PET scan called an Axiom PET scan, uh, which um, also can find earlier stage prostate cancer, not with the same precision as, as a PSMA, but it was useful. So all the um, infrastructures out there across the country for doing PET scanning, and when PSMA came along, that pre-existing infrastructure could be utilized, and so it's, it's come on uh, very quickly. So these different PET scans are, um, uh, well, let's say comparing PSMA and Axon PET scans, uh, the PSMA is a more sensitive scan. There are uh, relatively uncommon prostate cancers that don't make PSMA, about 10% of prostate cancers, so a Axon PET scan might be a good fallback position in those individuals. But PSMAs can find cancer sometimes with PSAs as low as 0.2, whereas an axon PET scan, you probably need a minimum uh, PSA of around one before you're gonna start to pick anything up. So that's one example of different PET scans. Uh, there's also FDG PET uh, scans, which are um, used mainly for lung cancers and lymphomas. Uh, rarely will pick something up with prostate cancer. We have uh, F18 PET bone scans, which are sensitive indicators of uh, irritation of the bones and can pick up early metastasis. Unfortunately, most insurance companies aren't covering them. Uh, they aren't utilized very much. So there's a whole a range of PET scans out there, but PSMA sort of sits at, at the top of the mountain as the, as the ideal scan. And these other scans are uh, going to have utility sometimes in exceptional cases. But when we talk about PET scans in the prostate cancer world now, we really need to be talking about a PSMA PET scan. So you had mentioned with an Axiomen scan that the PSM, PSA needs to be at least one. So what is the lowest PSA you could see for a PSMA for it to pick up cancer? Well, in the hormone-sensitive patients, which is uh, where most of these scans are being utilized, you're looking at a threshold of about 0.2 and you'll maybe pick up something in about 20% of individuals with PSAs that low. As the PSA goes higher, say up to 0.5, you'll find um, prostate cancer maybe in about half of those patients. And as the PSA gets up above one, uh, you're looking at maybe 90% of patients, you'll find the prostate cancer, whether it's in the prostate or outside the prostate. Other than cost, is there a reason that upon diagnosing somebody with prostate cancer, they're not doing a DRE, a PSA test, and then also doing a PSMA scan to check to see if somebody has prostate cancer? Other than cost and then perhaps ignorance, it's a new test, and so some of the doctors still are unaware of this technology. Sadly, the uh, many of the private insurances are not covering PSMA PET scans uh, yet, um, either even for relapsed or for newly diagnosed. Uh, very disappointing because this is such breakthrough technology and it gives much more accurate information. Uh, Medicare has been very generous in covering PSMA PET scans for both relapsed and newly diagnosed. 
Uh, patients just have to have a diagnosis of prostate cancer for coverage, so we're very grateful for that. One question we get quite often is, does PSMA pick up all types of prostate cancer? Is there any cancer that it doesn't pick up? Yeah, there are uh, certain types of prostate cancer that don't make PSMA, and uh, that is something to keep in mind. Uh, people have been using scans um, to try and avoid biopsies. So if someone has a spot seen on MRI or high PSA, um, since it's a disease-specific scan, it's attractive to think about, well, let's just do a PSMA PET scan and make sure there's no cancer present. And that if the PSMA PET scan's clear, maybe you don't need a biopsy. And the PSMA PET scans are about 90% accurate, so that's pretty good, but not perfect. So there, there will be some question as to the possibility of a uh, prostate cancer that's not uh, utilizing PSMA or doesn't have PSMA on its surface. And so the scan's not 100% accurate. So in those cases for those 10% where the prostate, the cancer cells are not creating a PSMA um, antigen, like what, what is done? Like what do people do in order to check for that 10%? I don't know. What the, it, this is such new technology. I'm not sure there is a uniform policy. Uh, the vast majority of men when they have uh, high PSAs or abnormal MRIs are getting prostate biopsies. And so that uh, would pro possibly be uh, necessary to undergo a targeted biopsy if something has been seen on an MRI. So if somebody has a PSMA scan and the cancer is shown to be localized to the prostate, they don't see any sort of metastatic activity outside of it, um, the person's wondering what the negative predictive value would be of not having metastasis later. Is this a really good sign? Is it based off the Gleason score? What does that look like? It is based off the Gleason score. So it seems like the um, statistics are coming in as follows, that in the people that have what we call high-risk prostate cancer or azur in the uh, methodology at the PCRI, chances that the, there's something outside the prostate that's being missed by the PSMA PET scan is about one in five. And if someone has an intermediate risk, or what we call a teal in the PCRI staging system, uh, the chance that there's something outside the prostate that's being missed by the PSMA PET scan is probably around 1 in 10. Somebody had a PSMA uh, PET scan, and it said that they had extra capsular extension. So they're wondering if that's the same as locally advanced. And the doctor told them they had locally advanced, but they saw that on the scan, and they're wondering what the definition between terms would be. I think they're synonymous terms, but I would like to comment on this concern about locally advanced disease or um, extra capsular extension. Historically, uh, and I think this is sort of a surgical point of view, if there was anything outside the prostate, the assumption was that those individuals are at higher risk of developing, developing metastasis. And of course, the development of metastasis is a watershed event. That's really what defines what is dangerous about any kind of cancer, including prostate cancer. That assumption that extra capsule extension or um, locally advanced disease translates into a uh, higher risk of metastasis hasn't really been borne out in studies. And uh, I won't go into the reason that it was previously believed to be you know, a danger for metastasis if you had some extra capsular extension or ECE. You know, there's, a, there's a reason that people used to think that, but now we know that the risk of uh, metastatic spread is much more based on the grade of the cancer than where it's located. If it's coming through the edge of the prostate or not, um, the chances for metastasis is gonna be based on the Gleason score, not on whether or not there's some extra capsular extension. So another patient has a question regarding the timing of their PSMA scan. So they've already had um, a shot of Lupron, and they're wondering, can they have a PSMA after they've already received some form of treatment, or will it alter the results? Or the fact that it altered it doesn't matter. Well, that's a very it's an interesting thing, because historically with CAT scans and bone scans, we were counseling people to ensure that they postpone any hormone treatment until after the scans, because prostate cancer is a very hormone-sensitive cancer and you could erase the spots and if there were spots outside the uh, metastatic lesions you would want to know about it and take appropriate measures. It appears that at least for the initial early months after people start hormone therapy it's that the uh, manifestation of PSMA on the surface of the cancer cells actually can go up. So there may be a small even advantage for finding any metastatic lesions in people that have had some early exposure to hormone therapy. I don't think this has been studied systematically, and I don't know, you know what sort of a delay, and, and I'm, I'm not counseling people to go on hormone therapy first and then have scans. Uh, I'm sticking to the old uh, standard approach of get all your staging done and then start your treatment. 
But uh, it is interesting that some um, researchers have pointed out that there can be an increase of PSMA on the surface of the cancer cells after they're exposed to androgen deprivation. And that theoretically could even make up spots of cancer light up more brightly, at least for uh, maybe a month or two after the uh, initiation of hormone treatment. Speaking of hormone therapy and PSMA scans, I think one of the biggest topics that we've talked about this year is shortening our courses of hormone therapy because of PSMA and maybe not going for the full 24 months or 18 months. Can you speak to that? Yeah, it's a challenge that we're all being faced with now with the advent of, of uh, new technologies. It takes years to develop uh, protocols that everyone can agree uh, show the optimal treatment plan. And all the protocols that we have for giving hormone therapy to men who have uh, intermediate or high-risk disease were developed in uh, prospective trials that were performed over a 10-year period. Well, we've only had PSMA PET scans on the market now for a, less than a year, and uh, we don't have information in terms of uh, what to expect in people that have negative and positive PSMA PET scans. If you think of these PSMA PET scans, what they are is a shortcut to staging. All the previous staging of high risk and intermediate risk was all a statistical projection to decide what's the likelihood of something being outside the prostate. Now we have scans that are basically telling us if there is anything outside the prostate. And should we act on this new information or should we just stick to the old policies? Well, one of the reasons to think about acting on this new information is the old policies would extract a high price in terms of quality of life. Taking hormone therapy for 18 months uh, in a 70-year-old man it translates more into like 30 months because there's a slow recovery. Um, and so being without testosterone for extended periods of, of time to maybe improve cure rates 5 or 10 percent is um, of questionable value. So I think it's something that needs to be explained to patients that if they're thinking of very long-term hormone therapy, which would be a standard approach in people with high risk or azure prostate cancer, then um, they need to be educated as to how much the cure rates will actually improve in light of the fact that PSMA PET scan isn't showing anything outside the prostate. Uh, and it may be a relatively small percentage and some people will say, I don't wanna take hormone therapy for that amount of time just to get an extra 5 to 8 percent cure rate. On the other hand, if PSMA PET scans do show something outside the prostate, we know that, that in that individual it is a proven fact that their, the biology of their cancer has the ability to spread around the body, which is what makes any cancer dangerous. And in those individuals, you can see that you might argue for even stronger treatment, that not only a mere 18 months of hormone therapy, but maybe even a short course of chemotherapy. So this has a huge impact. There are no uniform policies right now. People have to think on their feet and decide, you know, with this new information, do I really want to be as aggressive previously if I don't have any sp uh, spread of the disease? This is really good news. Doesn't that mean that I can back off on the intensity of the therapy a little bit? Thank you so much for watching this video on PSMA PET scans. The reason we're bringing this to your attention is because PSMA is a new technology, it may not be widespread throughout the medical community yet, and we want you to bring this up to your doctor so that you guys can make the best treatment decisions no matter where you're at in your journey. Thank you so much for allowing us to be here for you. As you know that, P maybe you don't know, PCRI is a 501c3 nonprofit. All of these videos are provided to you by funds from our donors. So if you would like to join us and support PCRI, you can visit the link below in the description and donate there. Also, thank you so much for being here. If you have questions you want us to ask or topics you would like us to cover, please leave that in the comment section below this video. And if you need more information, we are here. Please visit PCRI.org for more.